Now we're going to look at the maths of equilibrium. The relationship between the concentrations of reactants and products in an equilibrium can be expressed mathematically, which is interesting and useful, and can be used, for instance, to predict whether a system is at equilibrium, what it will look like when it does come to equilibrium, or how it will change if we alter something about it. So take a hypothetical reaction involving chemicals A and B turning into C and D. The small a, b, c and d in this uh, equation are the stoichiometric coefficients, the numbers that we have to put in there to balance the chemical equation. So for instance, in the reaction between uh, hydrogen and oxygen, the stoichiometric coefficients are 2 for the hydrogen and 1 for the oxygen, which we don't bother putting in, and 2 for water. So the small a, b, c and d are those coefficients. So for our hypothetical reaction, when it comes to equilibrium, we can say that the concentrations of the reactants and products will always obey this relationship. When a chemical formula is put inside a square bracket, so this, for instance, the square brackets mean the concentration of that chemical. So this is the expression. You take the concentration of the products at equilibrium, that's C and D, and you put them over the concentrations of the reactants at equilibrium, that's A and B, and you raise each concentration to a power equal to its stoichiometric coefficient. So in the original equation, the stoichiometric coefficient of chemical C was little c. So we raise the concentration of chemical C to the power of little c, and also for D, A and B. This expression will then always equal a particular constant, which is called the equilibrium constant, or KEQ. A given chemical reaction will have a particular KEQ, and nothing can change this constant except for temperature. So as long as you're performing a reaction at a constant temperature, you can say that at equilibrium, the concentrations of products and reactants will always obey this relationship. So in very rough terms, KEQ is like a ratio products over reactants. And you can use this in a number of ways. Because KEQ is fixed, because it's a constant, if you know the concentrations of three of your species uh, in this situation where we've got four altogether, you can work out what the fourth should be. You could also determine experimentally the concentrations of all of the species involved and then use those to work out KEQ for a reaction. We're going to practice a few of these types of problems. Before we do, I need to point out some variations on KEQ. The constant in the expression above is written KEQ with a subscript EQ for equilibrium, but it's sometimes referred to as KC, where the C uh, refers to concentration, and that's to indicate that that expression is written in terms of the concentrations of the species involved. But if you're dealing with a reaction involving gases, it's also possible to write the expression in terms of the pressures of the gases, like this. So P means pressure, the subscript C means the pressure of gas C. And then just as in the other form of the expression, we raise that number to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient. Um, however, we will usually be using Kc in this course rather than Kp. OK, so let's work through some examples. Firstly, we'll practice writing equilibrium expressions for reactions. So let's take the first one here, the reaction between hydrogen and carbon monoxide to give methanol. Remember that the expression involves products over reactions, uh, reactants, sorry, and that the concentrations must be raised to the power of the stoichiometric coefficient. So this is going to look like KEQ equals our only product is methanol, so the concentration of methanol over the concentration of hydrogen times the concentration of uh, carbon monoxide. And then you can see that hydrogen has a stoichiometric coefficient of 2, so we raise its concentration to the power of 2. It's squared. And the others have stoichiometric coefficients of 1, so they stay the same. So that is the equilibrium expression for that particular reaction. Note that because all the species in this particular reaction are gases, we could also write an expression for Kp, in which case we would use the pressures of each gas. 
All right, now let's take the next one, sodium chloride dissolving. Now, equilibria can be physical as well as chemical. Um, so in this case, we've got something dissolving rather than an actual chemical reaction taking place. We're going to be looking more closely at dissolution equilibria uh, in uh, lessons to come. For now, though, there's something important that you need to know. Because in equilibria, what we're interested in is changes in concentration or pressure, we can ignore reactants or products that are in the solid phase or the pure liquid phase. So they do not appear in the equilibrium expression. The reason is that while the amount of a solid might change, its concentration, the number of molecules in a given volume, remains constant. It's only when a substance is dissolved in a solvent or when its particles are far apart, like in a gas, that it's possible to change its concentration. When it's in a solid or a liquid form, the particles are essentially as close together as they can get. So as long as that uh, reactant or, or product stays pure, its concentration doesn't change. So when sodium chloride dissolves, we ignore the, the solid reactant here and uh, we write the expression like this. It's going to be products over reactants. So our products are sodium ions. So we want the concentration of the sodium ion and the concentration of the chloride ion. Both of those are aqueous, remember? That means they're dissolved in water, so they do have concentrations. And normally we would then put this over the concentration of the reactant, but in this case our reactant is solid, so we just ignore it. Actually what happens is that the unchanging concentration of that solid reactant is sort of subsumed into the value of Keq and you just uh, it's it's taken into account in that way. Okay uh, similarly in this reaction here where we have calcium carbonate solid decomposing into calcium oxide and carbon dioxide gas two of our species here are solids so our equilibrium expression is going to be quite simple we ignore the calcium carbonate, we ignore the calcium oxide. The calcium, uh, carbon dioxide is our only product. So that's our equilibrium expression for this particular reaction. Uh, and it even has a stoichiometric coefficient of one, so we don't even have to raise it to any power. So in this, for this particular reaction, we have the unusual situation where the equilibrium constant is exactly equal to the concentration of one of the products.